Thank you for the opportunity to testify today regarding my experience with the COVID-19 vaccine mandates imposed by employers under the influence of the federal government and the harm they cause to individuals and families across the country. Today, I will share my personal story and experience, but I do so fully aware that my ordeal is not unique. I only hope to carry the message of countless Americans who li whose lives were turned upside down and whose rights were trampled on in the name of public safety. For a decade, from 2011 to 2021, I lived out my professional dream working for ESPN as a reporter and host primarily covering college football and basketball. I was a dedicated and valued employee. In fact, I worked nearly every weekend of the 2020 football season, which was the height of the COVID pandemic before a vaccine was available, traveling to games and reporting in a safe and effective manner. As the vaccine for COVID-19 became available, ESPN and its parent company, the Walt Disney Company, encouraged employees to be vaccinated. While their position in support of the vaccines was evident, on April 1st, 2021, Disney sent an email to all employees stating that, quote, getting the vaccine is a personal decision for each of us. That position would prove temporary. A few months later, I received a notice from ESPN that effective August 1st, 2021, a COVID vaccine would be required to attend all remote events. This includes all games and remote studio shows. There would be absolutely no exemptions to this rule. Shortly thereafter, Disney extended this mandate to all employees, regardless of travel, unless a religious or medical accommodation was approved. While this mandate was not entirely a surprise, the reality was still hard to fathom and incredibly difficult to process. As a consequence of this mandate, for the first time in 14 years, I would not be reporting for the sidelines of college football in the fall of 2021. Regardless, I retained hope that I could still remain an employee at ESPN and work in my capacity as a studio host. This hope hinged on receiving an accommodation on either medical or religious grounds. Also during this time, my husband and I were working with fertility specialists in the hopes of having a second child. An already stressful and emotional period exacerbated, exacerbated by the impending uncertainty of my job status. I contacted my doctor in July and shared with him my concerns regarding the vaccine and my employer's demand I receive it to continue working. Given my good health and our current calendar for conception, he supported my decision to forego the vaccine. He agreed to provide the necessary documentation to apply for medical accommodation. I notified my reporting manager I would be doing so and we get, began the process through human resources and legal counsel for ESPN. Unfortunately, in my follow-up correspondence, correspondence with my doctor's physician assistant, assistant, I was notified due to the large number of medical exemption requests received, they were having a clinic-wide meeting to discuss how best to handle them. After said meeting, I was informed that as a clinic, they would not be providing any medical exemptions for any patients. Instead, I was referred to the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology and the CDC websites Despite my doctor's acknowledgement that this medical intervention was unnecessary for me as an individual, a blanket approach was taken for all patients disregarding our specific needs and risks. I subsequently notified ESPN that I would be modifying from a medical to a religious accommodation request. I had a valid and sincere opposition to this injection in regards to my scheduled IVF transfer. I also have valid and sincere religious ob objections to the COVID-19 vaccine. The extent and basis of my beliefs were questioned and they were discussed at length with human resources representatives from ESPN. The sincerity of my religious beliefs was acknowledged, but it was determined I could not continue to be employed without creating an undue burden upon the company. I was given one week to comply and get the injection or be separated from the company. I did not receive the vaccine as my beliefs did not change in that week and therefore was terminated as an employee with ESPN in October of 2021. And just like that, newly pregnant, I was stripped of my job, my health insurance, and having my personal and medical decisions the topic of national news. It's hard to explain what it's like to have so much taken for you, from you for doing what you know in your heart and your mind to be the right thing for you and your family. The financial toll it took on me and my family, and so many like ours, was significant and it is still enduring. The lost wages and sacrifices made by families like mine who stood up to the overreaching, unjustified mandates to preserve their autonomy and health can never be fully recovered. 
but the impact wasn't just on our livelihoods, it was on our lives. We were bullied, vilified, slandered, and ostracized. Nights were sleepless, days consumed by doubt and worry. Thankfully, my resolve strengthened with constant prayer, faith in God, and the support of loved ones. As I, like so many others, tried to come to terms with my new reality and reconsider how to provide for my family, our own elected government officials shamed us. Anyone who didn't obediently follow orders to get in line and roll up their sleeves was portrayed as an enemy and a threat. No regard given to natural immunity, personal convictions, religious beliefs, or individual health, all valid reasons for declining this injection. If you were unvaccinated, you were part of the problem. And that's why today I hope to be part of this solution, to make sure this type of tyranny never happens again in this great country, that we acknowledge the misguided directives and unnecessary harms done to countless Americans, harms caused not by the virus, but by the response. If we are truly the land of the free, the one thing that should be mandated is that we will never trample the civil liberties and bodily autonomy of our citizens again. Thank you.